Hey, all right, check out this uh, soda can stove I found. It's a design I found online on a blog several years ago, and I can't figure out why it's not more popular. From Kotlin's car camping trips, hiking, uh, and even a cross-country motorcycle trip on uh, the Transamerica Trail, it's the only camp stove I've used since I discovered it. I think it would also be great for like ultralight hiking or emergency situations when the power goes out at home and your gas stove even doesn't work, or uh, if you're standed, stranded on the road in the snow or something like that. Uh, or even just having a bug out bag. It's really the ultimate survival stove. It's perfect for boiling water, warming up canned food, or whatever else you might want to use a small stove for. It's super easy to make. You can make it using just a standard with soda can and a pocket knife. All the other do-it-yourself stoves I've found is, uh, on YouTube. They're all neat obscure types of cans, or a hole punch, a drill, special tape, tin snips, and more. It's uh, kind of weird. Uh, this one's super easy to make, though. You don't need any of that, just a standard width soda can, uh, which obviously you can find literally anywhere, even just side of the road or a trash can or drink one yourself, and then a pocket knife and a little bit of know-how. My favorite thing about this stove is just as long as you have a pocket knife, you can get literally everything you need for a weekend out from around your house or even just a single gas station if you're on the road. You just need the can, the fuel, some canned food or whatever you're going to eat, a lighter and some utensils and again food so as far as fuel it burns uh, same thing as any other alcohol stove everybody likes the heat in the yellow bottle it's a water remover from gas so uh, you can find it in pretty much any gas station auto parts stores walmart 90 percent or higher isopropyl alcohol also works really well walmart again pharmacies where you can buy it in bulk online and if you're really in a pinch you can use gasoline as well let me show you how it works real quick with a quick boil test. It uses less than an ounce of fuel, uh, and it can burn, or it can boil about two cups of water in just over eight minutes. First of all, we want to make sure we have a stable level, clear area for the stove to rest on. We're going to have burning liquid fuel here, so it's critical that it doesn't get jostled while lit, um, or else you're going to sp spill burning liquid fuel on the ground, and uh, it's not great. If all you've got is a cigarette lighter, I like to take a piece of grass or a leaf or something like that so I don't risk burning my hand. The flame can be hard to see during the daylight, so be careful with that as well. Just dip whatever you're using into the fuel, light it, and then use that to light the stove. You'll hear it ignite. After just a second for the flame to bloom to the outer edge of the stove, it's ready to cook. Just set your pot directly on top. Another thing to note here real quick is that it is really susceptible to the wind. In this case, there's none, but... uh. And really, I've never had a problem of any sort with the, the wind, but you can get a windshield online. They're real cheap, real light, easy to use, obviously. But uh, I normally just use my body or a rock or hide behind a tree or something like that, and it works well enough for me. When you're done cooking, you can either just let it burn out or you can smother it with an empty cup or pot or something. Definitely don't try to blow it out, though, or you're going to blow liquid fuel out of the stove. And again, you don't want flaming liquid fuel flying around, especially in your face. If there is any fuel left over, just... Uh, Take off the top of the stove here, pinch the bottom like this to make a pour spout, and then pour it right back in the bottle. Easy. The stove itself weighs only about a third of an ounce. Super easy to make. Again, just need the can and a pocket knife or a survival knife or whatever you're using to cut. I'm going to demonstrate using a cutting jig I created, and, but I went ahead uh, ahead of time and just made both versions with a pocket knife as well just for you to be able to compare them. Here's how they turned out. I burned each briefly just to make sure they work and they were fine. Uh, they're mostly just not as pretty, marginally more difficult and dangerous to make uh, barehanded. I ended up with a couple paper cuts on my hands, but uh, whereas using the jig, it never gets any cut on my hands at all. It's just an overall cleaner, easier process. It doesn't damage my knife blades. A lot better overall when you're making a whole bunch of them at once for a video. All right, let me show you how to make this real quick. There's a couple different ways. <clears throat> the easy version is just to use a standard can opener to take off the top. Uh, you can use enough to do that as well. Here's what it's going to look like when we're done. So first we're going to start with the can opener. I'll show you in just a second to, uh, where to cut with a knife, but it's pretty much the same spot the can opener does. You just want to start at the lip there and then go all the way around, kind of leverage the knife against the edge of the can. You'll get it right off. It won't be as clean as if you use a can opener. It's perfect with that, but works with the knife as well. All right, the next thing we need to do is we're basically just removing the middle of the can. I'm going to cheat and use this cutting jig here. Uh, I've got a razor blade. If you've got a razor blade, that might help as well. But again, you can just use a pocket knife. It'll work 
just as well with a little bit of practice. Uh, you're going to be kind of freehanding it, but uh, I'm going to make the scratches around the can here and give you kind of an idea of how much material to remove in the middle and where. Um, so with a knife, the easiest thing I found to do is just kind of stab the can straight in the middle and then tear it in half all the way around. From there, I would probably tear up to where this line is that I'm making here for the top and then do the crimping that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Uh, and then once you have that top part prepared and done, you're going to take the bottom part and just tear it down to about where this line is I'm making here, but maybe a little bit higher. You can always pull off more material, do another tear all the way around just a quarter inch or whatever and get it down to where you need it to be. But uh, just try not to go too far because you can never put the can back together. So, uh, Give me one second to do this line. It's just a little scratch if you're using the blade. Just, uh, just a scratch and then you want to just pierce it and it makes it super easy to tear around this line. You get perfect clean dull edge every time. It's very easy, very repeatable. But uh, with a knife you can also tear the material and it's not too bad. So if you're uh, using the knife and you make that initial cut uh, to get all the way around, you can use the knife blade, or you can just kind of like I'm doing here, but again, it's going to be zigzag because there's no line for it to follow. Uh, you just work your way around the can. You can guide the tear by which way you uh, push on the can and pull on the tear, basically. So I'm doing a little shortcut here, kind of tearing it sort of how you will with the pocket knife as well. Just kind of get it down to my line here and just tear all the way around. And again, once you get that can in half, it's really easy to tear it. If you pull straight, you actually get a pretty decent line, even without the pre-scratched can. So the middle material is trash. Just uh, recycle that, throw it out, whatever you want to do. And then now we have two edges. And with a pocket knife, just take the spine of the blade, the back, with my tool, I just use this edge here, and we're gonna make kind of little combustion chambers all the way around. So just take two fingers, press right between them, you want a good little crimp, even through the radius there that goes around the can. You just uh, looking at the finished can, there's little holes there where the flame comes out. So just shift over the length of a finger, do it again. We're gonna go all the way around the can. All right, the last couple don't have to be perfectly spaced, that's fine. So now all we have to do is just uh, fit it back together. I have to squeeze a little bit, and if you crush it too much, you can always press it back out once you've gotten it assembled in there. Just stick a finger in and press, it's fine. And then one final feature we wanna do is just make a little hole to relieve pressure when it's burning. You don't want a negative pressure on your fuel or it's not going to burn as well as it can. So just the smallest hole you can in the top edge there just to let some air in and should be good to go. All right, here's the next version of the stove you can make. This one's a little bit easier if you don't have a can opener. Um, if you don't want to destroy the thin plate of your knife cutting around this top edge here, this is going to be a lot easier on your knife as well. Um, I think it burns just as well anyway, so... I'm going to cheat and use my jig to get perfect lines again, but again, if you're using a pocket knife, just stab it right through and then work your way around. Just take it nice and slow. Try to get it real good, even edge. You want whatever you're cooking, your pot or your can to be able to sit flat on top. So I'm going to start with just my scratch around here. If you're using a razor blade, uh, I definitely recommend doing the same. And then I'm going to start my scratches for uh, cutting out the metal as well. Uh, if you're using a knife, um, you actually want to take off the top first because it's going to be a lot easier when you have the whole can to leverage for cutting that top part. That's certainly the hardest part. The rest of it, you can just kind of tear apart. But the top has a little bit extra structure there that'll give you problems. All right, so back to removing the top. If you've got a razor blade and you made a good scratch, you can uh, start by piercing it just right here. And then we're just gonna press in on that above the cut and work our way around. If you're using a knife again, just uh, work your way around with the knife. But 
and just take a edge of something. I've got this. Your uh, fingernail might work if you've got long nails, but uh, if not, just use a knife or whatever tools you can find to just press in along the top. Try not to damage the bottom edge as much as you can, but you can always bend it back into shape if you mess it up too much. It's not a big deal. It's a pretty uh, primitive stove, so it doesn't have to be perfect. With this version as well, I wouldn't worry too much about making a air relief at the top either. So once you've torn off the top, you get a nice clean edge, not even sharp. You can drag your finger around it. Uh, and then the rest of the stove, just the same as the other version, fit it together and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you like the stove. Hope it works well for you. Let me know if you uh, find a way to improve it or any other comments, concerns, ideas. Let me know. Thanks.